How's everybody doing? Tinkering with Carly's. I want to thank all of you who have subscribed. I appreciate it. And if you're watching these videos and enjoy them, by all means, please subscribe. I want to thank you for the comments and the emails. Um, which brings me to... Normally, I do these videos in advance of when you guys see them. Sometimes they're two and three weeks um, where I put them up to come out on a certain date. Uh, two, two weeks ago, three weeks ago, uh, we had a problem with the comments. Um, some comments I got, some comments I, I believe I didn't get, and some comments I got I couldn't answer. I couldn't reply to them. Now, that problem seems to have worked out, and I'm getting the comments again, and I'm able to answer them. So, if you sent a comment in and I didn't reply, it means I didn't get it, or I couldn't reply to it. Uh, whether it was a, a glitch with YouTube or Google or whatever, I don't know, but it seems to have rectified itself. So, now that we got that all done, we're going to move on to today's video. Uh, today we're going to put the, the shift drum on and the shift forks in and get everything hooked up on this rebuild that we've been doing. So, we'll get right to it. Now, since we've started this rebuild, everything in the transmission that we've rebuilt it with has been upgraded. Um, and this is the upgraded shift drum. Now, I'm going to show you the difference between this one and the stock shift drum um, and why I'm so fond of these. Uh, now, I have one of these in my bike. I've had it in there uh, 10, 12 years. Never had a problem with it. I love it. And I put a lot of these in bikes, and I've never had a problem with them. Okay, so first what we're going to get to, this is the stock shift drum. This is what comes stock in your Harley. And if you notice, there's a bearing in there. And it's, I, I mean, these work well, but they do have a tendency to get a little bit sloppy. It's hard to find neutral in them. Anybody who, who's, who's got a Harley who's ever sat at a light trying to get in neutral. You go from first gear up into second gear, then second gear down to trying to find neutral. And you finally get it. Um, but sometimes it's just a little bit difficult to find. And with these bearings, these bearings wear out from time to time. Not, not real often, but they do wear out. Now, with this shift drum, you can see there's no bearing. It's on a spindle. Now, this is a Baker. Um, now, I'm not endorsing Baker. I'm not paid by Baker. Um, this is just what I like. Over the years, I've used a lot of these, and these work terrific. Now, you can see this is on a spindle. Um, the, there is no bearing at all um, and it moves much much better you know that it, 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 it just moves better you get nice solid shifts with this now if you look at the pins on the drum they are much heavier then the pins on the stock drum, which also you, you, you get a better, better grip, better solid shift with this. And the one thing I really like is this piece right here, which on the stock drum you don't see. See, it's not there. And turn it around so it faces like that. So you have this piece on the baker. And what this is called, it is called a redundant neutral detent. 
And what this does, it has a little groove here in the drum itself. There is a ball that rides in here that's adjustable. And when you're sitting at a light and you come up from first gear into neutral, this pops right into neutral. There is no fighting with it whatsoever. And like I said, I've had one in my bike for well over 10 years. And I put a number of these in um, on five speeds and six speeds. And it is, they're great. I, I mean, you don't ever have to hunt, hunt for neutral with these. But you get a nice smooth shift with these. And it's a heavier drum than the stock drum. So it's heavier material. So you get nice, clean, crisp shifts with this. And I, I, I can say in all honesty, I've never missed a shift on my bike with the, the Baker set up in it. Um, and seeing this transmission is going to be for me, um, we're putting all the stuff in it that I want, that I like. So now we'll go ahead and we'll get this installed. Okay, so now we're going to get this installed. Now, if you look inside there, the gears are, this is a fresh rebuild and everything in there is dry. So what we're going to do is pour a little bit of oil over the gears so they get, they're all lubricated because like I said, um, this transmission, when it's done, is going to get boxed up. So what we'll do is we're going to just take a little bit of gear oil like that and pour it over the shafts and the gears. like that and just give it a spin so everything is lubricated in there and again like I said it, this is going to sit for a while because this is for a future project okay the next thing we're going to do is get the shift forks installed now, um, I was going to put upgraded shift forks in this, but I found a brand new set, so we're going to put th those in first. So we're going to put this one in. And that one. And, oop, wrong one. There we go. And this one. There we go. Now the shift forks are in. Now, I, I know I talked about this before. If you've, you've never done this before, um, and you have a question on how the shift forks go, they have ears on them. The long-eared shift fork goes to the clutch side where the main shaft comes out the shift fork with with no ears this one here the middle one that goes on the counter shaft and the short eared uh, shift fork this one here this goes towards the clutch actuator side so now that they're in, we're going to put the put the uh, shift fork rod in. So what I do usually is I'll take the shift fork rod and get that all lubed up. And then we'll take and install it through the hole and line it up in the shift forks. And slide it on through.
that's in there. Okay, now that's neutral right there. Now when you install the new shift drum, these have to be in neutral when you put them in. Now, on the, the shift drum itself, you can, I don't know if you can see it or not. I'm hoping you can. Um, you have on the um, detent, you have little grooves in them that the ball, the, the bearing runs in and out. That's first gear right there. Now, the smallest cut out is neutral and that's where you put the whoop, missed it that's where that has to be so now we're going to get this installed now there's a couple of ways you can do this um, you got to be careful when you're doing it and you might have to mess with it a little bit to get everything lined up shift drums in neutral transmissions in neutral now you can either take the spring off of here and get it out of the way or just lift it up. I just lift them up. And you take and you put the shift drum over the dowel pins. And now this is where you may have to mess with it just a bit. There it is. There. Sometimes you just got to mess with them a little bit to get them in there. And that's what it looks like when it's installed. It's in neutral. see everything spinning so the next thing we do is we get the pillow block bolts installed now this one here in the back you gotta get the washer down below that that spring Baker used to s supply the the screws with this or the bolts, but for some reason they don't do it anymore. And these are seven sixteenths. that spring there is always just a little bit tough and that takes care of that now we spin it around and we will get the shift arm on it. Okay, so now we got the shift arm on, 
Now we'll give it a shot. We're here. Try it out. There's first. Second. Third. Fourth. And fifth. Now we'll downshift. Fourth. Third. Second. Neutral. And first. So that's it. So we're going to hold it right there for today. And this is before we've even adjusted the, the eccentric screw right here, which we'll do on the next one. Okay, that's how you put the shift drum in and the shift forks and, and, and run through the gears. Um, now this shift drum, like I said, it's got that uh, redundant neutral detent which helps you find neutral real simple. You don't have to hunt for it. It's just right there. You lift up on it and bang, it pops right in the neutral. The other thing this does is um, sometimes with the stock drums and forks, you wind up with a false neutral um, and with the pulse shifter also. This eliminates that false neutral. Um, I've never gotten a false, false neutral with one of these and I put them in five speeds and six speeds. So, I, I mean, they really work well. And like I, I said before, Baker doesn't pay me for this. I don't endorse Baker. This is just what I like. This is what I've learned through experience. And this is what I like. This is what works for me. So, that's why I use it. So, I hope this helps somebody. And until next time, everybody be safe out there.